So Brad, we've seen that if we did want to pool the base on the moon, we've got a source of water mm -hmm. and in principle a source of helium-3 to do fusion reactors. So that would make a moon base much more practical rather than having to ship all the water right. and hence all the rocket fuel from the Earth. But why would we want to have a base on the moon in the first place? I mean, the moon is, you think of the most godforsaken wasteland on Earth, <laughs> looks like a paradise compared to the moon. I mean, the hard radiation, the searing heat, the freezing cold, the lack of air, uh, the dust that clogs everything up. I mean, the moon is not a very appealing destination, really. I mean, presumably it might be of some interest just to prove that you can and to pioneer technologies. But apart from that, the moon seems like a bit of a dead end. Well, you're, you're in a bit of a way, you're actually kind of right. Uh, you know, just as we were talking about with the 60s and 70s, the goal wasn't the science or anything like that. It was planting the flag and say, hey, we were the first. And that's actually kind of the view of the moon. It's less of what the moon has to offer, but more of what we can use the moon to do, i.e. kind of explained in this plot that we looked at earlier, a stepping stone to other places. So the moon is essentially it's less the destination and more the path to other places in space. Right, so this is the potential energy. So this is how much energy we need to supply to get from the Earth's surface to Some escape velocity out into deep space. That's right. And you can see that for the Moon, the amount of energy needed to escape from the Moon is much, much, much smaller than that of the Earth because the Moon is 10 times less massive and also less dense. That's right. So that means that if you wanted to fly out into deep space uh, and you needed to get some fuel or something from the Earth, you have to use a lot of energy. But so the Moon, not very much. So the Moon might be a good base to refuel or build space probes or something like that to send out to Mars, right? That's exactly right. And as you said, because now that we have some stuff that we can use, you don't have to bring that stuff with you to the Moon. You just need enough to get off the Earth. Then you can get to the Moon and kind of refuel and go somewhere else into space like Mars. So the idea is you might launch a uh, mining operation, uh, some fusion reactors for a moon base from yep. the Earth. So that will need all this energy. But once it's on the moon, it can produce metals, it can produce oxygen, it can produce hydrogen from those um, hydroxides or from the polar craters, yep. and then use that to, uh, with a very tiny energy, poop, send out further. That's right. Live off the land, so to speak. So let's actually take a look at this. Let's see how practical this can be. So if we kind of look at this differential, this is in one times 10 to the eight, so followed by eight zeros. And so this is potential energy per kilogram. So this is how much energy you need for one kilogram to get off into this orbit. So to get from here to, let's say about the same spot of the moon is about a difference of 0.6, give or take. So that's 0.6 followed by eight zeros. So that actually ends up being about 60 or so megajoules, 60 million joules worth of energy for one kilogram. Okay. Now, obviously, lots of things are more than one kilogram, but we'll talk about that. Now, for the moon, to get to the same spot, you need a lot less. It's a, maybe a tenth, if that, 0 0.1. We'll just make it easy and say it's 10. Yep. We like easy numbers in astronomy. We're not trying to plan this mission. We're just trying to show the scale here. So we need about 0 0.1 followed by eight zeros gets us 10 megajoules. So we need a lot less to get from here to here as opposed to here to here. Okay, sounds good. So now let's start sending a few things into space with these comparisons. So let's just take a small satellite, a kilogram. It's a very small satellite. <laughs> it is a very small satellite, so not going to be really practical. You're not going to do this for or, but let's make it simple for us. So if we need, at the numbers I was calculating, 63 megajoules per kilogram. Now our satellite's only one kilogram, yep. so we need 63 megajoules. Now to get from the moon, we need 10 megajoules per kilogram. One kilogram, 10 megajoules. Okay. So there is a difference, but is it worth it to just send a one sat on kilogram satellite up there? Well, of course, you're not talking about one kilogram. But let's say a person, that's a pretty small person again with 50 kilograms. But pretty, pretty small person, but you know, obviously if we're going to be sending people there to do this, we need to account for that. So now this that's is not including their spacesuit, their oxygen supplies, anything else. That's right. This is literally them one, hopping on the rocket. One with... small naked person. <laughs> that's right. No <laughs> luggage. So this is a cheap airline, let's say. So we have now 63 megajoules per kilogram times 50 kilograms gives us over 3,000 megajoules. On the moon, though, it's 10 megajoules times 50 kilograms is 500. So now we're actually getting 
quite a huge difference of energy. In fact, you're realizing that we can put about six people into orbit from the moon for every single person we can put from Earth into orbit. Okay, that's starting to look a bit more of a significant difference. It is. Now, let's think about practically, as you said, we're not bringing anything with us. Now let's talk about water. Now, let's say a human needs about eight liters of water a day to drink, to account for some of their fuel, maybe a shower, growing some food. Eight liters is probably not a lot if that's going to be your entire source of everything. Mm -hmm. So we need eight liters of water a day. Now, a kilogram per liter is about the weight of water. Now let's say you're going to go in this space for 100 days, because you're not just going to go there for a day. So you need 8 kilograms per day times 100 days, so you need 800 kilograms worth of water to just to support one human in space for 100 days. Now, of course, spacecraft really recycle their water very right. effectively, but the water you're using to break down to make rocket fuel, you're not going to recycle That's it. That's right, you're not going to recycle it. So, you know, this is, you know, again, it's just trying to show what some scales of some weights here. Now, we need 63 megajoules per kilogram, times 800 kilograms, so we're getting 50,000 megajoules worth to get from the Earth. Whereas from the Moon, we're only looking at about 8,000. So now there's starting to be a really dramatic difference here from getting it to the same spot, essentially, in space from the Moon as compared to the Earth. Now, to put this in perspective, I mean, megajoules are not a familiar unit to most that's people. Right. But a litre of petrol, gasoline, is about 50 megajoules. So that's talking about leaving Earth orbit for one kilogram, you need to burn about a litre of petrol. And rocket fuel is comparable, actually. Yeah, it is. It ends up being quite similar. That's in right. fact, any complicated hydrocarbon is going to be about 50 megajoules per kilogram. So this is talking here. And that might cost, I don't know, current figures, about a dollar. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so that's a dollar as opposed to you know, 20 cents. That's, that's a big difference. Up here, you're talking you. A lot more. <laughs> yeah, a, a lot, lot more, right? You know, you're talking about uh, thousands of dollars more in terms of costs, but it's also the effort. But there's also another catch here, Paul. Mm -hmm. So, all right, we, it's one thing to get into space, and it's, say, one thing to send someone to the moon, but we probably want to come back. Yeah. I think so. We're not just going to send someone there. I think, you know, Musk is happy to stay on that, the That's Mars. true. <laughs> I'm not signing up for that plan. So now here becomes the trick. Let's say we want to take that one kilogram satellite, send it to the same spot in orbit. Mm -hmm. But we're also going to need the same energy to get back. So okay. if we want to send that satellite to the moon, we need the same energy to leave Earth. So 63 megajoules times one kilogram. But we also need... That's to go from the Earth's surface into... Earth orbit and onto, onto the moon. That's right, exactly. But now we get to the moon, that's great. But now we still need that 10 megajoules per kilogram to get back off the moon and cruise back to Earth. Now, once we're doing that, there's a huge amount of potential energy. We have to figure out how to slow down. We're not really concerned with slowing down here. It's all about getting there. So we actually have to bring this fuel or this energy with us. It doesn't come from nowhere if we're not using the moon. So now, 73 megajoules. Okay, not that big a difference, but when we start thinking about now that same human, so we have our previous number, about 3,000 megajoules to leave Earth to get around the moon, 500 to get off the surface of the moon, back into that same orbit, but now we have to bring that energy with us from the Earth, so now we're 3,600. Okay, not too bad. But now we're getting the complicated, so here we have our water, we need 800 kilograms um, per day, so to leave Earth, that 50,000 number, that gigantic, lots of energy to leave the Earth, still less on the moon, but we have to bring that back. So it's essentially dead energy here. Yeah. Energy. I'm not actually talking about 100 days to get That's from the right. Earth to the moon. This would be probably go from the Earth to the moon and then go from the moon on towards Mars or something, something like that. Something like that. That's right. Or maybe do some orbits around the moon or something like that. But if you're not using the moon for fuel, you're not using the moon to refuel, that doesn't come from nowhere. You have to bring it with you, right? You don't hop in your car, drive, and then all of a sudden say, oh, there's no petrol stations around. Well, I probably should have brought a jerry can with me. Yes. And so now you're starting to realize that it's even more economical to leave from the moon as opposed to go to the Earth, bring that extra fuel to come back. And this is what Apollo did, right? They didn't have their fuel from nowhere. They had to bring the fuel for that lander, as we saw, with them. 
and it's a whole pyramid because uh, every bit of fuel you need on the moon needs more fuel to get it from the Earth to the moon and more fuel to launch it. And the rockets had multiple stages, so 99% right. uh, of the rocket never makes it to the moon. Exactly. And we're discounting the weight of the rocket. You know, this is for a rocket that is exactly zero mass. So, you know, that just starts to become more and more complicated. As you said, it just piles on and piles on and piles on. So, as we said, we're not just worried about getting to the moon here. We actually want to use it to get to Mars. Now, in that case, I think the benefit of going from the moon starts looking a bit weaker. Like if you just wanted to get into some orbit around the sun, because I mean, to go from the Earth into orbits this much energy, and the moon's much less. That's right. But getting to this level of energy doesn't help you get to Mars. You then have to add this much to get to Mars, which is actually much more. There's actually another huge jump. So let's look at that number. 